that is what's happening. I hope you enjoy the crazy chaotic content that's going to be this vlog because it's going to be all over the place and um, I'm very excited to see what happens. I'm halfway through another one because I cannot be stopped. It's amazing what happens when you change what you want to read to actually fit the mood that you're in. It's crazy. And I just genuinely loved it. What I'm discovering, okay, so I went into this book. Let's backtrack a little bit. Hi everybody, my name is Kelsey and we're about to get very, very nerdy with week three of the Magical Aurelia Readathon. If you are a stooge, you will have noticed that yes, I am starting this vlog literally minutes after ending the last one, but there's a very specific reason for that, and that is because this week I am changing everything that I had planned for my TV. <laughs> Let me tell you what is happening. If you saw last week's vlog, you know that I didn't read a lot last week. I said I still read a good amount, but I didn't read too much, and that is the fault of none other than Red, White, and Royal Blue the movie because I watched it on Tuesday and then watched it at this point it's Friday night um I think three or four times <laughs> it's taken over my life so I've reevaluated what I want to read right now because I'm really in that mood you know like I just want something that feels like red, white, and royal blue. So I was looking at my shelves without even really paying attention to the fact that I was looking at my shelves, and this book popped out at me that is going to fit, I reworked some things, and it's going to fit one of the required prompts for the course career that I want to focus on, which is Master of Elements. Um, I have two that I've been focusing on all month. There's one that's like my priority, which is less prompts. That's what I'm doing first, and then I'm going to focus do first and then I'm going to focus on some other things. So I am predicting that this is going to be the week of contemporary romance because that is the vibe I'm in. That's what I want to read. So that's going to start maybe not with the first thing I read because I do have a couple of things that I'm carrying over from last week but that's going to start with something that the reason I'm starting this vlog now is because the prompt itself is the first prompt for restoration which is to read a book or start a book in bed, before bed. And I'm going to start this book tonight. And that is Husband Material by Alexis Hall. This is the second book in this series, which I think is called the London Boy series. The first one was Boyfriend Material. And I just checked Goodreads and there's a third one coming out next year sometime. It says October 24, so we'll see. This is a British male male romance that when I read the first one, I remember comparing it to Red, White, and Royal Blue meets the, um, I almost said Lizzie Bennet Diaries, that's not right at all, the Bridget Jones Diaries, because it has all of that British humor that you would expect to see in the Bridget Jones Diaries, especially the movies. I haven't read the books, but the movies, um, Bridget Jones Diaries, that's the, like, humor that's in this, and then, of course, it has, like, these main two characters are very reminiscent in my head of the main two characters from Red, White, and Royal Blue. We have Luke, who is the son of a rock star, and then we have Oliver, who is a barrister? He's like um, a lawyer of some sorts. And so he's very uptight and different. And so that's the same vibes, I would say, as Alex and Henry from Red, White, and Royal Blue. So I have not once wanted to pick this book up. This is on my list of books to read by the end of the year. I did all contemporary romances thinking that this was going to, like, that's easy. I love contemporary romance. It's easy to fit in. I think I've read two things on that list. So it's not going well. And so I just kind of, like, assumed this was not going to be a book that I was going to get to because I just wasn't feeling it. But because of the movie... I've now um, decided to pick it up. I have the audiobook from my library. The first book in the series, there's not going to be a lot I can probably tell you about this one, but the first book in the series follows Luke and Oliver in a fake dating arrangement. Luke needs good press for a um, dung beetle... <coughs> I don't even know what you would call it. Like, it's a fundraiser, a company that fundraises for dung beetles. I have no idea why that's a thing, but he got some bad press because of some stuff that he's done in his past. So he fell and everyone interpreted it as him being like a blackout drunk. And so in order to fix that, he decides he needs to date someone who is 
good. And Oliver needs a date to a wedding or some sort of like family gathering. And so they create a fake arrangement, fake dating arrangement. And the first book, y'all know how fake dating goes. We're now in this one. Um, so this one takes place two years after the events of the first book. I don't remember a lot of the details, but I did go through and kind of like read portions earlier today um, that I had tabbed. So I like things came back to me about their characters and I'm really excited to see how this one goes. These are pretty chunky when it comes to like romances. Like this is over 400 pages. This is 416 pages to be exact. And I have loved what I read by Alexis Hall. I have another book by this author. Um, I have an arc by this author that's coming out later this year. So I want to get to this one before that. So this is what I'm going to start right before bed tonight. Um, I shall show you proof, don't worry. So that's why I wanted to start this now so I could tell you that this is my plan. But as far as what's coming over from last week, I'm still making my way through Earth, which is for one of the prompts, hold on, it's for the first prompt of elemental studies, which is to read a book with Earth in the title. I did not pick it up once last week. And unless things go differently, we'll see if I pick it up this week. It's supposed to be a reverse harem story about vampires, which is, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not far enough into it. I'm 30% of the way through, but so that's one that I am bringing over. And then I'm also bringing over Stoneheart, which is the first in this collection. It's part of the Dark Olympus series. This is just a bunch of Dark Olympus shorts by Katie Robert. Stoneheart is a prequel that takes place between Medusa and Calypso in the Dark Olympus world. It's a modernized reimagining of Greek mythology, but it takes place in a city called Dark Olympus. And there are these 13 that kind of run everything. And so each book follows a different couple or trouble, and they all are like loosely based on different um myths. The first one was Neon Gods, which followed Hades Persephone. There was one that followed Psyche and Eros. Another one was a like trouble between Helen, um, Achilles, and Patroclus. And I think, I don't know what the most two recent ones are because I can't remember. It's been a hot second. But Stoneheart is the prequel for that. It's part of this. It's 75 pages, but I do have to read it physically. It shouldn't take me too long, but I did start it at the end of last week, hoping I guess earlier today, hoping that I was going to fit it in before the end of the week. That did not happen. So I'm bringing both of those over in case I need a break between some of the other books that I'm reading. But this one is going to be, I think, my main focus because I'm letting the mood just take me, you know, like I'm just, I'm letting, I'm letting what I'm feeling happen. So that's what I'm bringing over. Like I said, I think this is going to be the week of contemporary romance because the book that I had in for this prompt was part of the Bridge Kingdom series. I had the first two books. No, I had the third and fourth book in that series slotted for a couple of prompts that I needed for restoration. I've changed my mind on that and I've made them both contemporary romances. So this is the first one. This is, I'm just letting that take over um, and just changing everything about my TBR. So this will be the week of experimentation and hopefully reading things that I need to, but um, we could fully blame Red, White, and Royal Blue, the movie, for me picking this one up. But I'm not upset because, like I said, I'm not sure I would have gotten to this one anytime soon this year. Honestly, I was in the, I was about ready to unhaul it. Like, that's where I was at. It's like, I was happy with the first one. I got what I wanted from it. I wasn't so sure about this one. But I did really enjoy the first one. And like I said, I'm in this mood. So we're taking this one on and that's what's happening. That is what we're starting this week with. So as far as plans for this week, I only have one solid plan and that is Sunday. So tomorrow's going to be a good day for audiobooks. I think I'm going to be cleaning a lot because on Sunday I have some friends coming over and we're doing like a Pride and Prejudice Jane Austen party. I am very excited about this. It's some of the friends that I used to work with and we all like bonded over Jane Austen. It's one of the small things that we bonded over, but we're watching the 2005 one with Kira Knightley here. We're all like making something different. I'm making potatoes because if you know the scene, you understand. So that is going to be my weekend, but as far as like the rest of the week goes, I don't really have any crazy plans. 
So hopefully we'll be getting a lot of reading done because I'm kind of going with the mood that I'm in. I'm changing everything that I thought about this TBR and we're just, we're just letting it happen. We're just going to let this happen. Okay. Um, go with me. Trust me that I have a plan and that even though my plan is changing, I'm changing it for the better as far as actually getting through things. Because if I force myself through books that I'm not interested in right now, it's not going to be good for anybody. So that is what's happening. I hope you enjoy the crazy chaotic content that's going to be this vlog because it's going to be all over the place. And um, I'm very excited to see what happens. So buckle down. This week's about to get very interesting. friends. So I'm here. It is Wednesday. So we are about halfway through the week. Well, a little, if you count the weekend, a little over halfway. I've got two days left, but I have lots of updates. I have many, many updates. I finished two books since I talked to you last. Very exciting. I, um, and then I'm almost, I'm halfway through another one because I cannot be stopped. It's amazing what happens when you change what you want to read to actually fit the mood that you're in. It's crazy. So on sun Sunday night, technically Monday morning, I finished Stoneheart, which is the first portion of this collection. It is a prequel novella to the Dark Olympus series. It takes place before the first one. And it is 
very, very short. It follows Medusa and Calypso. And in this world, I kind of talked to you, I think I talked to you a little bit about what this world is, but basically it's a reimagining of Greek mythology. We have this city called Olympus and it's run by these 13, which are the like 13 main Greek gods. They're all like titles. Medusa works for Athena and she is her like secret assassin. Stuff happened with the previous Poseidon in the story um, with Medusa. He really, really wanted Medusa and she said no and he kind of forced himself almost upon her. Not quite, but he was trying to and then Athena saved her and because of that she thinks that she owes Athena her life. And so at the very beginning of this short story it's Athena calling on Medusa because she needs Medusa to go kill someone. And the person that she wants Medusa to kill is Calypso. Now Calypso in this world is the mistress of Odysseus and Odysseus, his family and Calypso's family are having a very public dispute. Odysseus is kind of done with Calypso. Like he doesn't really want her as the mistress anymore, but he, he needs to save face. So he basically like gives the keys to Athena for the place that she's staying, knowing that he's basically asking them to kill his mistress. And so she goes and she's like, but Medusa is not like a fan of the whole situation because of her history with Poseidon. She just hates men in general at this point, but like specifically men like Odysseus, who is just like his easy way of getting rid of the person that's annoying him is to kill them and it drives her nuts. So that's how the story starts. It's really short. It's I think 10 chapters long but it's super, super short. And I gave it three and a half stars. Like it was fine. I don't think it added to the story in any way. It wasn't to the level of smut that I was expecting with Katie Roberts books. And I don't know if that's just because, no, I was, I was about to say this just might be because it's a shorter story, but I'm on Katie Roberts Patreon and she does a lot of Patreon shorts, which are literally like five pages and they are some of the smuttiest things I've ever read. And this short story novella was relatively not. So I don't know why that was. I just was expecting it to be more than it was. I mean, it was cute. It was their relationship. It was very quick because it was a novella. It was almost insta lovey in a sense. So like, I didn't love that. So it wasn't my favorite thing in the world, but I still did enjoy it. And it still got three and a half stars. And I'm glad I read it because it is, like I said, the prequel to the series. I liked having that look at the world, especially because they go to the underworld section of the city, which is where Hades, like his realm is. And at the beginning of the series, people don't know that Hades is a thing. Um, they think Hades is dead, but actually he's there controlling stuff from the shadows. And so you have that as well, but like it doesn't particularly add to the overall plot to the story. Like anything you needed to know about Hades running the underworld, you learn in the first book. So it's fine. I definitely enjoyed it. There's way more to this book. Like that was the biggest portion of the book, but the rest of the book is a bunch of like super short couple of pages, short stories. So I will continue to read them because I know I have read some of them before, but some of them I know I haven't. So I'll definitely read them at some point, but I read it. It's fine. I moved on. Yay. So that was for the third prompt of elemental studies, which is to read a book with a snake on the cover. Um, I'll pop the original here because that's the cover that I was using. So technically I finished this and technically it doesn't count yet because it's the third in the elemental studies things that I need. But anyway, so I finished that one. And then yesterday, was it yesterday? It was yesterday. I finished Husband Material by Alexis Hall. I gave this one four and a half stars. I loved it. I definitely like the first one more. Um, I think it's because I like the the hating, the, uh, the fake dating element, the fake relationship element to the first story. This one I felt like, well, I loved them as a couple and I love learning more about it. This is heavily influenced. And like, if you look at the author's note, he even says it there, but it, this is heavily influenced by Four Weddings at a Funeral the movie, which I've actually never seen, so probably should at some point, because it's broken into five different parts, and each of them is a different wedding and one, and one funeral. And so it basically takes place two years after the events of the first book. It follows Luke and Oliver where they are now, where all their friends are now, going to a bunch of weddings and discovering what 
their relationship is because like they both have a lot of stuff to work through because of the families that they have come from. Luke has a lot of issues with his dad because his dad is a rock star and so he's very been very very absent and kind of takes advantage of Luke as a person and so Luke is dealing with that issue and then you've got Oliver whose parents are quite homophobic and um don't really see him and his relationship as important as maybe his brother's because his brother is in a straight relationship. So you've got that conversations as well. So they both come from very toxic relationships that hurt their own relationship. So while I loved them, the reason this didn't get a full five stars from me is because I felt like there was just so much conflict in this book for the story that was being told. Like I know the point of the story. There's a lot of conversations on gay rights and here and what, you know, a, what their relationship is going to look like. And, you know, the biggest thing is that Luke has a very, um, I don't even know what the right word is. Luke looks at like the pride marches and all of the rainbows and things of that nature as really, really comforting and really, representative of him as a queer person whereas Oliver has the complete re opposite reaction like he doesn't mind he loves the marches he loves being in that kind of stuff but he thinks very not negatively but not very highly of like commercialized rainbows and things like that and so he just has a very different look and so they kind of are talking about what being gay means to them and that's a very big conversation in this book. The future is a very big conversation. So like I said, there's a lot of conflict in here that is almost unnecessary. But at the same time, I get it. It's like they have the same argument like five times. And while I get the point of the argument, and it's a very important argument, and each time they talked about it, things came out about them. And they both had to do some soul searching. And they had to kind of express their opinion on this. And like, they are very important conversations that you should have with your partner, especially if you're in a relationship like this. But it just felt like sometimes we were just hitting the nail on the head over and over and over again. And I was like, okay, I get it. Can we move on? So that's why I didn't get a full five stars because it just, like I said, it felt like there's too much conflict for the sake of having conflict. But again, this is a male romance. There's probably a lot of conversations in here being a straight woman that I'm not going to get um, from this. So just kind of take my opinions with a grain of salt. But I feel like the conversations were very important and would definitely hit with the right person. While it kind of sounds like I'm just complaining about this, I really enjoyed my time reading it and I definitely picked this up at the perfect time. Because like I said, when I picked it up originally, or when I started this vlog, I have had zero interest to pick up this book since this year started and this was just the right time because if I hadn't been as obsessed with red white and royal blue then maybe this would have annoyed me more or if there's just like a bunch of stuff that could have happened but I still loved it I tapped the crap out of it like it was still super cute they had some really important conversations some really cute moments I think this is a beautiful story and I'm excited to see what the third one in this series which should come out sometime next year and that one is called father material and I'm interested based on where this book ended slash some of the conversations that we had in this book about being parents that I'm very interested to see what that one's going to be about because I don't think it's as straightforward as I think it is um or as the title suggests it would be so I'm really interested to see what other things this author has I've looked into quite a few books by this author that I already have on my TBR so I'm hoping to maybe pick up some stuff by them in the future, I'm also very interested in, I have a arc of the most recent book by this author called 10 Reasons to Hate You, Ten, hold on, 10 Things That Never Happened. And that one comes out in October. And it actually follows a character that we've met in here. Um, he was at one of the weddings from Luke's past. And so he is the main character in that. And then also in the Q&A in the back, there's another character that we met that he has said he wants to write a book about as well. So I'll definitely be keeping my eye on this author and more things that he has been writing. I just, I think it's, I don't know, I think it's great. And I really enjoyed it. And this was, again, the perfect time to read it. I flew through this. Like I devoured this probably not as quickly as I could have, but I really wanted to enjoy my time reading it. So I finished this one, which was for the first prompt of restoration, which was to start the book before bed, which I did. Yay. So I've now 
sorry, I've got my TBR over here. As of right now, both of those books, Stoneheart and Husband Material, were for things that were required for my elementary studies career. So very excited. So as of right now, I have three, three books that I still need to complete my elemental studies career. One of them I've started, which is Earth, so I'm going to have to make some progress in that one over the weekend slash next week. It's just going to have to happen. Um, and then there's one that I'm a little worried about. But anyway, but the one I picked up is not required for elemental studies. It is required for the other career, but I had the audiobook from my library and there was a ridiculously long wait list and it's coming due. So I decided to kind of pivot on what was required and read this one instead, which has been really good because I started it yesterday and I'm almost, I'm already over halfway through. And that is The Road Trip by Beth O'Leary. This is a fun second chance romance, if you will. I, like I said, I'm a little over halfway. I'm about 200 pages into this book and it's almost, it's not quite 400 pages, it's about 380 pages. So I've got about 180 left to go. I am listening to this on audio. I love the narrators, highly recommend. There are two because it switches back and forth between our two perspectives, Dylan and Addie, but it also switches back and forth between the present and the past. So this book is, first off, I'll tell you, it's for my career, which is the second in my Art of Illusion, which is to read an audiobook. So this has been great. I have really been curious about this author's work because I read her most recent thing, which was the no-show. You guys know I read it last year, raved about it. I, it's like the book that if anyone asks about any kind of book recommendations, that's the one that I give people. I just want everyone to read it. And I've got all of her books that are out right now. So I wanted to make some progress and see if she is in fact an author for me and it just wasn't a one and done thing. So far we're looking positive. So this one follows Dylan and Addie, like I had mentioned, and it starts where they both in the past, they met at this um, villa of sorts. Dylan was there as a guest, Addie was there as a caretaker, and they met over the summer and started a relationship. And so this book starts when they're on their way, I believe, to the woman who owns it. Her name is Cherry. I believe it's her wedding or she's hosting a wedding and they're helping. No, it says it's to Cherry's wedding. So they both are invited to Cherry's wedding. And on the way there, they basically are in two separate cars and they accidentally get in an accident. So we have Addie who is going with her sister and this other guy who knows Cherry and just asked for a ride. So he's just kind of along, he's literally along for the ride. And in the other car, you've got Dylan and his best friend, Marcus. And when they collide, Dylan's car gets completely wrecked. I guess it's technically Marcus's car gets completely wrecked. And so they all pile into this really tiny five-seater with five people and um, they're, they're just traveling. And they're reminiscing on the past because there's been, so far, there's been some stuff that's come out. So Dylan does not have a really good relationship with his parents. He does come from money, which I know has been an issue between the two of them because Addie does not. But they fell in love very, very quickly. It is almost like... It does give the vibe of insta-love, but only because it was like a summer fling that turned real. And so, not yes, it is insta-love in the fact that they fell for each other very, very quickly, but they had to really work at it. So it doesn't feel as insta-lovey as you would expect when you hear that trope being used. So I do want to mention that because if you are interested in this book, it they're going to fall in love very, very quickly. But like I said, the whole point of this is them reminiscing on their past and maybe figuring out if something went wrong and now there may be very different people. So because of that, we do go back and forth and we're learning about the past. We're learning about past them. They've changed a lot. Um, Dylan has been going through some stuff. It sounds like they both were heartbroken by the breakup, but the other one has been blamed. So like Marcus is straight up yelling at Addie because she broke Dylan and she's like, that's not what happened. He broke up with me and her sister is on her side and this poor little guy who's just along for the ride his name's Rodney he's just like literally in the back like I don't know what's happening so it's a very long car ride this takes place from what I can tell in one day uh because they are in the car and then they're just again like we're flipping back and forth so if you are a fan of People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry it has the same vibe with that except for the present part and that book is over a couple, I think over a couple of weeks, whereas in this one, it's literally a day. So 
I've been really enjoying it. I've been tabbing it a lot already. I think it's fascinating. I love deep diving into these characters. It's very character driven, which is not what I expect slash that's not true. I guess I did kind of expect that it would be more character driven, but it is, that's not a thing. Like if I could go plot over character, I'm always going to go plot. So the fact that this has heavy character development is really interesting. It gives like, you really have these very well rounded people and they talk about it. And I just think it's very fascinating. So, so far so good. Really enjoying it. I am quite literally flying through this. So I could finish this today or tomorrow. Like I'm not, it would not surprise me if I finished this very, very quickly. So this is the one that I am currently in. And so far, so good. I'm not sure it's going to get a whole five star yet. But again, I'm only halfway through. And if it's anything like the no show, the second half of the story is where things really happen. So uh, that's where I'm at. But I did want to mention some plans that I do have for today. I have literally rearranged almost everything else <laughs> on this TBR. It's a problem because I'm such in a contemporary mood right now. I've just kind of like accepted the fact that I'm going to go with what I'm comfortable with. So I've rearranged a bunch of stuff, which is fine. But the things that I haven't rearranged are I do have one graphic novel and one manga. And I really want to get to one of them this week because it's really easy just to kind of like throw them in while you're doing other stuff. And this one I need to start tonight because the prompt is for the third in animal studies. So it's not required for my main career, but it's required for the other one. And that is to read this in the course of two days. So I'm going to pick up the fourth volume of Laura Olympus for this. It's relatively thick compared to the other ones. I feel like it's the biggest one, but it's a graphic novel. I can get through it relatively quickly. So I wanted to start it tonight. Sometime maybe I'm really good at reading when we're like watching TV. So like I can flip through this while something is on. Um, so I'm thinking that that might be a good thing and then I can finish it tomorrow. Maybe I can flip through it before bed, that kind of thing. But I wanted to mention that because I'm probably going to start it tonight and finish it tomorrow so I can finish it in two days. And because it's a graphic novel, it'll be super easy to get through. So I do want to mention this one. It's a reimagining of Hades and Persephone. It's a graphic novel series that you can read for free on the app Webtoons if you want to. It's all up to date there. This is not. This is through... I don't know how many episodes are out as far as what's included in this book. This is the most recent one. I know there's a fifth one coming out later this year. And there's at least one more. I think there's at least six announced. There's going to be there's going to be more than that because this only goes to episode 102. And I really want to say there's at least 200 or so episodes that are out. But this is the next one. I love it. I love the art style. I think it's beautiful. So I wanted to mention that one because I'm probably going to pick this one up today or tomorrow and finish it by the end of the week. That's the hope so I can get one of my shorter things in as well. But that's the goal is to finish the road trip next because that's what I've got the audiobook for. Um, and then dive back into a couple of the things that I am needing for my career, which again, I reworked almost everything. So um, it's fine. We're just accepting the fact that I am in this mood. And that is great. August is going to be the month of contemporary romance and I am not at all upset. So I made things work. I'm very excited. We'll dive into some more stuff later. But that's where I'm at right now. This is a very long update to basically tell you I finished two things. I'm halfway through a third and I'm going to start another one tonight. So this is where we're at. And I am enjoying my time. I'm just flying through it. And it's been so fun. Hello. It is the next day and I am here to talk to you because I've already finished a book. Um, I finished The Road Trip by Beth O'Leary last night slash this morning. I don't remember when I finished it. It was late and I was in bed. So I finished this one and it got four and a half stars from me. Um, like I mentioned when I talked about it yesterday, it's not for a prompt that is required for my career, at least the one that I'm focusing on. But... I am so glad I read this. It was like the perfect timing. There are elements of um, the book that I read before this husband material as far as like the characters go. There's a few things that are reminiscent in my head of those two characters and these two characters, which was fun to read about. And I just genuinely loved it. What I'm discovering. Okay, so I went into this book. Let's backtrack a little bit. 
I went into this book because I'd read The No Show by Beth O'Leary. It's the only book I'd read. It was her most recent one as of right now. She does have one coming out later this year, but as of right now, it's her most recent book and it got five stars. I can't stop raving about it. I was very nervous going into her other work because A, I had such a fantastic first step into her stuff. Plus it was her most recent one. And as it's true with most authors, they get better as they write. Like her first stuff might not be as amazing as her later stuff. So I was very nervous going in, which I think because of that, I went in with not the highest of expectations. Like I wasn't expecting this book to be bad by any stretch of the imagination, but I also wasn't expecting it to be as good as the no show because the no show was so good. And like that is peak amazing right now. So like everything is going to kind of be compared to that one, especially with her writing. So that's why this didn't get a full five stars because of how much that book took over my thoughts and how much I flew through the no show when I was reading it. That is peak five star and I didn't quite do that with this one. But what I'm discovering is that this author is so good at having those draw dropping moments because I legitimately, there's like a reveal of sorts near the end of this book and I didn't guess. Okay, so there's kind of like two reveals in like the same scene. One of them I guessed literally seconds. No, I kind of guessed as it was happening. Let's let's rephrase that. So I guessed that as it was happening, which is why a lot of stuff um, happened and like the way people were reacting to a couple of things. And then there was a second reveal that I guessed the correct thing but to the wrong person if that makes sense i'm being super vague and i'm so sorry but like something happened to somebody and i guessed the thing but i thought it was going to happen to somebody else and it didn't so either way i legitimately sat up in bed with my jaw on the floor uh because of like the big reveal and i just it was good. Okay, it was very good. I loved watching Dylan and Addie become closer and get to know each other again because it's been a couple of years, I think. I can't remember how long. Oh, four years. It says here on the back. It's been four years since they met and they were together for almost a year, not quite. So like three years since they broke up. And because of that, a lot of stuff has gone down. They both had issues in their private lives and with their parents and you know like all well he had issues with his parents and she there was just a lot of stuff that was going on and they both have taken the time away from each other to become stronger people and because of that it makes them as a couple stronger so it was really beautiful to read that because this their past relationship was so fast and so messy that I was very worried about what chance they had in a future relationship but as you go through the book you can really see some of the characters and it's not just the two of them like they're his best friend Marcus has is a big part of the plot and he's also undergone some uh, self-discovery moments and some changes and you really get to see once you start to notice that's what's happening you see a difference in the past Marcus and the present Marcus and I just thought that was really fascinating to read about these people who have spent this time and they're still the same people at the core but all the other issues they've had to deal with they have dealt with and I just thought it was so it was so good so I highly highly recommend her stuff this was a great one I'm really glad that I read it I'm glad this was the next one um, as far as her stuff goes because this was the most recent one um, this is the one that she wrote right before the no show so it's closest to her current writing style I would say um, but either way very very good it's giving me hope for the rest of them because there's two other books by Beth O'Leary her first two books that I haven't read yet and um the first one the flat share is the one that interests me the most and I've heard mixed things about that one although I just discovered that there's like a movie version of it and I didn't even know that was a thing so I'm gonna have to investigate to see if I have access to that because I have a suspicious feeling I don't but I feel like it's on prime you didn't need to know any of that I loved it. The moral of the story is I loved it. So like I mentioned when I picked this one up, this was Art of Illusion. It was the second prompt. The only 
the only the first two of Art of Illusion were required for um, the Wild Form Druid prompt. So Art of Illusion's done. Yay, excited about that. But I finished it. Very excited. Very good. Great things. Next. Next for us. Um, I didn't touch Laura Olympus last night because things happened and I needed to finish that book. So I'm hoping to maybe do it tonight. Uh, again, it's a graphic novel. So if I finish it, it has to be finished in two days at the most, but I could finish it in one. So if like I don't get to it tonight, I could finish it tomorrow if I need to. But I did pick up a different book. Um, and this one's going to be interesting because it's a prompt that's required. This is another one that I changed what it was going to be uh, to something else. This one is the second in the restoration, which is required for elemental studies or my Master of Elements career, and it is to read a book in a different spot each time. So this is going to be tricky because I'm interpreting this as starting every time you start the book again, it has to be a different spot because I listen to audiobooks a lot of the time and I'm always like running around. So as long as I start it in a different spot, that's kind of the way I'm going because I don't like this could be a really good prompt if you are a physical reader because you pick up a book and then you stay in that spot until you're done reading it and for that section and then you move on. But with audiobooks, it makes it a little weird. So what I've decided to go with is a relatively small book. So I'm going with the Buy the Book by Jasmine Guillory. This is the second in the Meant to Be series, which is a collection of stories that are contemporary romances based on different fairy tales, but they're all by different authors. So the first one in this was The Shoe Fits or something. The first one in the series is If the Shoe Fits, which I have right there. Um, and it was by Julie Murphy, and that was a Cinderella retelling. This one is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I know there's a third one out that's a Little Mermaid retelling, but I don't know that author. And then I think Christina Lauren just announced they're doing the most recent one, and I can't remember what that one is based on. For some reason, Rapunzel's in my head, but I don't know if that's right. Either way, this was on my list of books to read by the end of 2023, so I'm trying now that I'm in the contemporary mood, I'm trying to read a few things off of that list. This is one of them. So I just started it earlier today while I was putting on makeup. I basically got like barely into it. I read the prologue and part of the first chapter. So I now cannot start this book when I'm putting makeup on. Um, so I don't actually know how this is going to work because it's, uh, I basically sit in two places the entire day. My desk and that chair. Um, and then in bed when it's bedtime and I read before bed. So like three places in this house is where I sit and read. So finding new places to start this book is going to be very interesting. Um, but this is the one I'm going with. I'm hoping to finish this one in the next couple of days. Like I'm hoping to finish it tomorrow because A, it's so short and B, I will have probably run out of places to start this by tomorrow. So for this prompt, it's going to be a little interesting. We're gonna just kind of see what happens. But I've started this one. We'll see how it goes. We follow our main character, Isabel, who is at a publishing house. Uh, the book starts, the prologue starts with her having just started the job. She's very excited about it. It's at a publishing house called, hold on, I'm gonna figure it out. Tales of Time is what it's called. And then it fast forwards to two years later and she's been there for two years. She's one of the like, two token black people in the publishing house. She's not thought of very highly, like basically she's been given a lot of work and not been promoted, not gotten a raise, not really gotten any kind of recognition. She really wants her boss, who barely kind of acknowledges her existence, um, to tell her if she's doing a good job or not because she doesn't even know if she's doing a good job. Like she even mentions in the first chapter she's thought about putting a resume out there and like started writing a resume just to see if there's something else out there for her but she doesn't even know if she's doing good at what her job is right now to know if those skills are transferable and that kind of stuff. And so she's just struggling and she's dealing with this very tough author who's named Bo. He is a star that's writing uh like a failed star. I don't actually know what he is. We just know who, like, he's somebody, but on the back it doesn't say, like, who he is. But he's writing a, like, memoir, and he has basically been putting off writing it for a very long time, and they've had a lot of issues with him, and deadlines keep passing, and his publisher, or his publicist, no, his manager, 
keeps saying like, he's writing it, we swear. And so she's just, you know, kind of in charge of him. And because her job is going nowhere, she decides that her big thing that she's going to do to get noticed is to show up at this guy's house and make him write the manuscript. Give him a pep talk or two, get him going, and then um, he's going to write the manuscript and she's going to save this job and she'll be thought of as very, thought of very highly. Uh, but of course it doesn't go quite as planned um, and... I think she ends up staying there for a while and helping him write. So I don't really know where we're going to go. I remember reading the first book in the series, which I enjoyed, but I think I ended up giving it like three and a half stars. So do I have high hopes for this one? I don't know because it's a different author and I have loved stuff by this author. I've read a couple, I think a couple of things, at least one thing by this author and I did really enjoy it. So we'll see. We'll see what happens, but this is my next step is this one. So we're hoping to get to this one. We'll see if I finish the week off with it. I'm not sure yet. We'll see. But I'm looking at my TBR list and like, we're doing pretty good. If I can finish this one, then I only have two books that are required for my Master of Elements career, which is one of them is Earth, which I've been trying to read for like the entire month. And then one of them is a thick fantasy romance, which I'm nervous about, but I'm excited because I've enjoyed stuff by that author. So that'll be next week's problem. But if I can finish by the book this week, we're good to go. I can finish what I need to finish by the end of the month as far as like the career I want, but also I can, um, a lot of the books that I've chosen that I'm probably going to roll over into next month because I'm very excited about all of these. All of these sound very good and right up my alley. So we'll see what happens, but that's where we're at now. I finished a book and I'm starting a new one. We shall see if I can get this one done in a couple of days. I think I can, but we'll see. Hi friends, it is a bit of a hot second. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm a little under the weather, so I probably sound ridiculous, but I thought it was, hold on, let me get comfortable first before I start talking. I thought it was about time that I actually wrapped up this vlog, so it turned out to be a little bit longer than I meant to. Um, I It's Saturday, and actually I meant to end this vlog last night, but I didn't do that, but that's okay because I actually do have an update for you before we sign off for this week's vlog, and that is that I finished by the book by Jasmine Guillory last night. I ended up giving this one four stars. I very much enjoyed this book. It is super sweet. It has some really cute moments between our main two characters. I loved the publishing industry aspect of it. I thought that was really fascinating because the publishing industry in general is just a really hard industry to work in, but the fact that she is um, a black woman in publishing is also hard, so there's a lot there as well. Uh, there's definitely a lot of hints in here to the Beauty and the Beast story. It's not like a retelling in the sense of she's got kidnapped and, you know, all that kind of stuff. There's talking 
inanimate objects, things of that nature, but there are hints. Like there is a Gaston character named Gavin that is hindering her a little bit. You do have a she's in this house with um Bo, our beast character, who is super, super sweet. And he just kind of needs the push in the right direction to write the book. So she's like voluntarily staying in this house. There are some moments I think are really funny that like she's obsessed with this house because it's huge and it's got all these rooms and she's really enjoying her time there that she has moments where she's like, I swear the bathtub responded and said this, you know, like she's got things like that. And I just think that's really funny because I think that's the author's way of having those inanimate objects talk back to her but it's her own like imagination. But I still really enjoyed this book. It's not like my new favorite all-time read by any stretch of the imagination. I think it was cute. It definitely did the job, but I don't think it was particularly amazing. I think it's too short to do that. I feel like there is some good character development that we get be between our two main characters, Izzy and Bo, but like we, there's more that could have been fleshed out. The plot was very straightforward. It ended in a way that was very abrupt I feel like I feel like there needed to be something else ne like that something else that needed to happen it just kind of like ended and then we did have an epilogue that was like a year in the future so like there was just some stuff that was very surface level romance was great I definitely enjoyed it there's some super cute moments between our main two characters but it's not my my next new favorite romance by Interest of Imagination but I am glad that I read it so like it's not like I didn't enjoy my time reading it. It's just that like I don't have um, a lot to say about it. It's kind of middle of the road almost but it was better than a three star which is why I got four stars because again I did have a lot of like aw moments while I was reading it. But it was short. It was fun. I'm glad I read it and that's kind of where I'm at. I already said this. This was for reading starting the book in a different place every time. So I read this over the course of a couple of days and a few different spots and I have finished it now. So that's great. So that means that for the total for this week of books that I finished is four. I finished four things and most of them are for my career. One of them was not. So as far as this week went, we had a pretty good reading one week. We started with Stoneheart, which got three stars. We did Husband Material, which got four. Road Trip, which got four and a half. And Buy the Book, which got four. So a pretty solid four star week lots of romances next week we're going to focus on the things that i need to finish my elemental studies career which is not a whole lot there's only two things that i still need to read so that's what we're going to focus next week on i don't think i'm going to be able to actually finish the wild form druid career like i want to but that's fine i still have I can for sure finish the element, the Master of Elements career that I need to. And that's the one that I'm more interested in because it's my second year doing that one. And that was my like number one priority. So I'm just going to read what I need to and then see what else we can fit in and just have fun. So that's kind of a look at what uh, this week looked like. Very different TBR wise. Nothing. That's not true. One thing. One thing I read, which was Stoneheart, is something I had planned from when I did my TBR originally, everything else is been rearranged, which is fine. That's, we're just, we're going with the flow. So I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. Let me know how you guys are doing, how your reading is doing. Are you on track to finish? You've got one week left. How are we, how are we feeling about it, guys? Let me know all your thoughts. But if you like this video, and I very much hope that you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe it down below if you like part of this awesome growing family. I've also got all my social media down there as well as other fun bookish links. So check all that out and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!